Welcome to Acoustic Guitar Episode 8, Acoustic Guitar Technique Exercises. Now these exercises that I have for you are very helpful in developing more advanced skills and accuracy when it comes to performing acoustic guitar ideas of any style of music or any type of playing. Here in part one, we're going to begin by organizing a collection of exercises that will help with fretting hand note placement. And the exercises are going to offer a much better association of the fretting hand to the fingerboard along with the coordination of both hands. So we'll have some, you know, tackling of going on between right and left hands when we're doing these studies. Plus, um, on top of that, they're going to help you with better recognition of tracking how the plucking hand interacts with your fretboard hand. So we'll do a blend of those two exercises. And this is really important because if you have poor technique and you're sort of fumbling around, you know, trying to match what's going on between both hands, you'll spend too much time missing notes. And of course, that's gonna to lead to a loss of clarity. So let's get started here with part one of of the lesson. In example number one, we're going to be looking at some two note in position, what's really referred to oftentimes as isometric drills. That means we're sort of locked up into a shape and we're going to be using a series of shapes to kind of lock our hand down. And we're actually gonna be moving this along the fretboard in a more lateral sense. Now, what this all comes down to is, see, in position studies, they make up some of the best technique assignments for you know for classical guitar, fingerstyle guitarists, you know, any anything you're working on that requires you know your uh, finger plucking technique as part of the mix and by taking just a couple of notes and developing some slow steady movements between a series of shapes uh, as an exercise we can begin really isolating finger movements and develop some really good sense of uh, fretting response. You want to have that excellent fretting response from the hands when you're working on the guitar, obviously. So in example one, I've developed two drills that apply this principle. In example 1A, the first drill here targets a fretting in position, uh, you know, idea between frets basically five to eight as it's uh, penciled down on the tab, and it's going to operate between the fourth and third strings. Now we are, however, after we learn it, we're going to move it around all over the place, but let's just get started here on learning this idea and getting it all set up for you. So as it stands off the tab, you know, printed in the tab there, example number 1A, we're setting ourselves up between fourth and third strings and we have a fifth and sixth fret, two note chord setup. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to go to the eighth and sixth frets. And then we're going to go to seven and five. And then we're going to go to five and eight. And on the plucking hand, I'm just using my thumb and my index finger to do those motions. On the uh, fretboard hand, I'm using my index and middle to do the fifth and sixth frets. And then I'm going over with my small finger to the eighth fret of the fourth string, grabbing that. And I'm grabbing the uh, sixth fret of uh, third string still with my middle. Then I'm gonna shift over and I'm gonna have my third finger on seventh fret, fourth string, index on the fifth fret of third. And then I'll have my index going over to the fifth fret of fourth string with the small finger up on the eighth fret of third. So that'll be the rotation of the fingerings. All right, and then once you get that down, get a metronome uh, ticking away in the background and get it very smooth. You know, if this is your beat, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when it feels pretty decent, begin moving it around the neck. You could do something like move it vertically at first. You could move it horizontally, whatever is good. You know, you may want to maybe just try shifting it over a little bit. Or you could work incrementally. You could start a little bit lower down and then, you know, move it up the neck a little bit. And of course, there's the element of changing strings. You could go to different string sets. Okay, you can move it all over the fretboard and that's actually what I'd highly recommend. I'd probably, you know, in fact, recommend something like maybe uh, putting on a, a timer or something and working for approximately two to three minutes and just go all over the fretboard, you know, all over the place. But uh, let's move on now. Let's go to example 1B where we're going to be taking the same layouts but we're going to spread it apart a little bit between fourth and second string in the example as it's set up. So look at example number 1B in your handout. We're going to be changing uh, the right hand plucking fingers as well. In, in this one, we're going to be using the middle finger along with the thumb. So middle finger and thumb. And we're going to be going between, again, fourth guitar string 
and second guitar string. So the two uh, setups that we have I'll go from the fifth to sixth fret there, and then we're gonna move over, get the eighth fret and the sixth fret, and then we're gonna have seventh fret and fifth fret, and then we'll have fifth fret down low with the eighth fret up top. So first of all, you know, when you're just learning these, you get it in one position first, understand how everything's set up, make sure you know where to go with all your fingering and all that, and then you could try maybe moving it over or something a little bit, you know, go to another location, and just try to set it up that way. And then you could even try maybe doing some incremental work with it along the fingerboard. stuff like that you know scoot it along get used to it move it of course after that to different string sets here maybe we'll move it between fifth and third now you know it's and don't don't worry about how it sounds you know if it sounds real goofy or really kind of takes you by surprise when you move it to different strings you know it's not a big deal. I mean, the main thing is that you're developing the technical concept of it, and you can flip your fingers around and, you know, do some of this in-position work. You know, you have four frets span, you have four fingers, you want to be able to develop that to a high level, and exercises like this can be really beneficial. So, you know, don't worry too, too much about the sound of it. You know, just get the technique together, be able to move it along the neck, you know, both vertically and horizontally, and you're going to get some great work going on between the hands. So that brings us to the end of example one. We're going to take a short break and we'll come back in a moment with example number two where I think you're really going to actually dig this. We're going to do some multiple string uh, plucking pattern exercises and it's going to sort of bump things up another notch from what we did here in example number one. So let's take a short break and come back in a moment with example number two. Hey everyone, Andrew Wasson. Just wanted to make a quick announcement about creativeguitarstudio.com. You know, if you haven't grabbed a free membership yet, just head to the website, click on create account, fill this form out, and you got a free lifetime account to the website. Once that's in place, you can just jump into the members area here where we got all the lesson plans. And my quick announcement I wanted to make is I'm really excited because we've got the latest installment in the advanced guitar program posted to the site. Now in the advanced guitar program is packed full of information. Each of these project lessons is around two and a half hours of instruction. There's probably around 160 to 180 hours of instruction just in these lesson plans alone. The latest installment covers minor pentatonic and there's a 24 videos. This, this uh, lesson plan is two hours and 45 minutes long when you run through all the lessons. If you've got a full premium membership, you can download the course files and an MP3 jam track. It's really quite the program. So if you're looking for a a really serious guitar course online right from beginner you know I've got the introductory program here or intermediate if you feel like you're more of an intermediate player and you want to work through you know lesson plans that are really geared to understanding the guitar fingerboard much better you know so if, if that's kind of your level I've got those set up but you know a lot of people really enjoy the advanced material it's all the major scales major seven arpeggios and chords and minors and pentatonics and lots of improvisation exercises through out here. So if you really want to jump into some great step-by-step -step material that is really organized and in, in no way is it some kind of random guitar course. Like I know I've heard so many complaints over the years about all the random lessons and then probably for a lot of you you're sick of the random lessons on YouTube that don't follow any kind of order and sequence. Well, you know, grab your free membership, start with that. But you know, when you're ready to advance to sort of the next level there, you can grab one of my membership plans. Basic monthly memberships $19.95 a month and then if you want to upgrade to the premium package you do save $60 it's a one-time payment of $179.40 but that does give you full access to everything on the site if you want a great step-by-step well-organized guitar course just head over to creativeguitarstudio.com and set up your membership today in example number two, we're going to look at this idea of multiple string plucking patterns and it's going to take the studies that we did from example one in a little bit different direction. We're next uh, going to create here some chord patterns and work at incorporating the plucking hand with some fingerstyle technique. Now, this is going to help develop some higher skills for note tracking between left and right hands and it's also going to help some uh, further benefit too for the fretting hand skill overall. Now in example two, I put together a study at first here that tracks several different uh, fretting layouts 
routes and establishes some good solid note tracking. Uh, example number 2A works off of a large fret span in uh, measure 1 and it goes into a tighter chord voicing in measure 2. So let's just check this one out. Set yourself up in uh, the seventh position and you're going to reach forward a little bit there so that you're getting up high at the 11th fret. So we have 7th fret to 11th fret between the 4th string going to 1st. And then we're also going to have a 10th fret note and a 9th fret note on the 2nd and 3rd strings. So that's the layout of tones. And you can see how I'm doing the setup on the uh, plucking hand. I've got the thumb, index, middle, and ring fingers set up, of course, between 4th and 3rd, uh, 2nd, and 1st. So all those are in order. Very easy to do stretches a little bit much but then what we're going to do after that just to make it technically a little bit more challenging is we're going to shift strings we're going to go to the fifth string and then reach forward to nine ten and eleven on the fourth third and second strings same uh, fingering combination on the plucking hand thumb index middle and ring let's go back to the uh, beginning of the exercise though and we'll just start again and then here's the shift okay so that's the first measure of the exercise And then after that, in the second measure of the exercise, what we're going to do is tighten the voicing up. It's going to give you uh, your hand a chance, your fretboard hand a chance to relax a little bit. And we're going to go across an augmented chord here. We'll have from the fifth string at a tenth fret, we're going to go 10, 9, 8, and 8 to create that shape. And then after that, we're going to do a major 9 chord, and we're going to have a double pluck starting that one off. So we're going to have uh, the two nines on the fifth and second string. And then we'll have a 10th fret 3rd and an 8th fret 4th. Alright, let's do that again. This is second measure in uh, example number 2A. So we're outlining some chords there. It's basically arpeggiating the chords. The second one, of course, uh, that major 9, it has a uh, two note pluck on it. So that's that one. Now here's the tough part though really is putting them all together you know working with both first and second measures we're going to have that uh, larger stretch of course starting back at the beginning of uh, measure one example 2a let's do that again What you, you know, they're not super easy, so you're gonna have to do them several times before you start feeling, you know, comfortable with it. And of course, work with a metronome so that it's a steady pace. Maybe I'm going a little bit quick for the rate and pace that you're gonna need to go at. Just, you know, slow it all down, have a nice, you know, slow, steady beat, and just get everything nice and clean. all about setting up the fingerings and then you know when you feel ready again like we were discussing before shift it along the neck work laterally with them and uh, study them you know for probably two three minutes I would say tops you, know, you don't want to do it too too long but you know get enough work in there where you can feel your hands get some good consistency and there's uh, the accuracy level has been building up now, one more thing I should mention, of course, that uh, two things I should really mention. Number one is never go too fast too soon. Remember, we're working on technical ideas and execution of things to develop clean, perfect playing. So, you know, rushing is not a great idea. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, you know, not that it, it's going to happen right away, but if you pr push yourself on these types of exercises too long, you know, too far, what ends up happening is you can get a little bit of pain building up, especially in your fretting hand, you know. So go easy on yourself. If you feel there's some pain coming up, I mean, you're not feeling too comfortable anymore, maybe even just take a few days away and off, you know, from doing this and then come back later when you're feeling a little bit more up to par on everything. But anyways, let's move on to example number 2B. I want to check this one out next. It's a three-string pattern. Remember when we were working on example 2A, it was a four-string pattern we were working from. Now we're going to shift over and make things a little bit easier with a three-string pattern. And it uh, just, again, has a consistent fretting layout that that uh, reorders the fretting you know on the uh, exercise as it shifts so let's just take a look at how this is all set up uh, starting at the uh, first measure of example 2b we're gonna have a bit of a, a stretched out feel here going from the fifth string eighth fret 
up to the, uh, sorry, the eighth, yeah, the fifth string, eighth fret, pardon me, to the third string, fifth fret, and that's going to be our initial, uh, you know, uh, layout, and then we're also going to have a sixth fret in between there on the fourth guitar string, so we'll have that kind of a pattern, and on the uh, right hand plucking, we're using three fingers now, we're doing the thumb, index, and the middle, so... That's our first pattern there in the first measure of example 2B. Then we're going to shift and we're going to have this reach that goes from the 5th fret to the 8th fret of 3rd string and we're also going to have a 7th fret, you know, in between there too. Alright, so we have a little bit different shape there. Alright, so now let's shift over back again. This is the beginning couple of beats here in the first measure of example 2B. Again. Now remember, you know, these things, when you're working them out, they're non-musical for the most part. You know, they don't really have any kind of nice flowing melody to them. So you want to remember that as you're working through the movements, it's really about setting your hands up into the fretboard so that you're getting a good grip into the notes that are important for the exercise. So, you know, you're after clarity of sound, you're actually, you're actually after a lot of good fretting motion. So keep that in mind, that's the main thing we want. Now, let's move over to the second measure of example 2B. Here we've got an 8th fret of 4th string reaching across to a 5th fret of 2nd string, and in between those two, on the 3rd string, we have a 7th fret. And then, on the second half of uh, measure 2, we've got 5th uh, and 8th frets, it's going to octave there, and then we're actually adding in a 6th fret in between on the 3rd string. Alright, so together. And again, you can tell on my uh, right hand uh, here plucking, I'm using again just thumb, index, and middle fingers. Now when we uh, combine both of those measures together, remember we're going to be working through 5th to 3rd strings and then shifting over on the 2nd measure working 4th to 2nd strings. So it's, uh, it's a challenging study, it may seem super simple, but to get it you know, nice and clear, you know, you're going to have to have some work ahead of you. Do it again. All right. So just turn a metronome on and get that pattern looping nice and smooth. Uh, set it up at whatever rate and pace is very comfortable for you. You know, you can, in the beginning, if you're a little bit uh, hesitant of having a strict click track or drum machine loop or something playing against it, you know, just count it out loud. You know, it's just straight eighth notes, so you could just sit there and go, you know, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and then do your loop. Okay, so that's example 2B. So now you understand how you can set up these plucking and multiple string exercises. It's really helpful. You can tell kind of what I'm doing. I sort of almost set up like a like miniature arpeggio ideas and you know just fooling around with shapes and trying to get some motion across the neck with them. And tracking is really important, of course, with your uh, plucking hand. But you, you know, you do these non-musical kind of random style exercise you know drills and it's surprising of what it really gives you in the long run it's just fantastic you know for your technique and for your execution of everything to be very clear now you know you have to realize too you're only a human being there might be the odd time out where it's not absolutely 100 percent perfect but you know again we're we're not robots or something we are just people you know so some go easy on yourself is what i'm saying you know you no no need to get really hung up on absolute perfection i mean it is really nice when you can put it all together and you have those couple of runs through that are just crystal clear everything's 100 percent. i mean that's really what we're striving for you know you know, build that up big and bright in your mind because that's super important as you go through those but at the same time uh ease back on the pressure on yourself if you do make a few little minor errors here and there again you're only human all right so anyway that brings us to the end of lesson eight part one 
and uh, you know, coming up in uh, Lesson 8, Part 2, I have some really interesting studies that I'm going to be running through with you. There's going to be some nice stuff on uh, just moving through some uh, fixed finger exercises I have. And I have some nice sustained single-tone plucking studies that we're going to take a look at, too. But uh, all this stuff, you know, as you move through it, as you develop a practice routine, it's going to really help you quite a lot. So, uh, you know, I hope to see you next in the members area at creativeguitarstudio.com. You will need a membership to be able to access part two of this lesson plan. But you know, if you pull out a basic monthly membership plan, or if you decide to go for the annual plan that gives you the full one year package, saves you 60 bucks and all that, you know, when you take those out, you're also going to have access to a ton of other material. I've got loads of other electives just like this uh, through acoustic guitar. There's guitar soloing. There's the master classes in the guitar blog series. There's the quick riffs and the quick licks. And <laughs> Of course, on top of all of that, there's the real meat and potatoes of everything, the guitar courses. You know, if you really want to get good, have a super organized step-by-step -step, uh, process to run through for learning guitar, I've got the introductory program, the intermediate program, and the advanced program. It's going to help you tons. Just head on over to my website at creativeguitarstudio.com, pull a membership, and uh, the basic, you know, one that you have for a general membership, I should really refer to it as a general membership, is absolutely free. You can come in there. You don't need to put in a credit card or anything like that. It's just 100% free. You just open it up with a username and password. You can go inside, check out everything, get a good idea how it all looks. And then if it, uh, it seems pretty cool, you know, you can pull out a paid membership and try it out for a month or something in the beginning and uh, test the waters on it, see if it's interesting. And then uh, after that, you can even uh, take it a step further and go for the annual plan where you're going to have full access to all the workbooks and handouts for all the course material. So anyway, I hope to see you next in the members area at Creative of guitarstudio.com. Smooth Jazz Chords introduces chord types that offer a very different sound from the chords that are used in almost every other style of music. The Smooth Jazz Chords video lesson is a two-part course that demonstrates chord types that are used in the Smooth Jazz style. These chords are often referred to as triad over bass note chords and the lesson demonstrates these chord shapes as well as their use using both diagrams and example progressions. Smooth Jazz Chords is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com. Thanks for watching part one of the lesson. Be sure to sign up for a membership at creativeguitarstudio.com to watch part two. In part two, we'll work on exercises that apply sustained tones and we'll expand on plucking techniques. Plus, as a member, you'll also be able to download the handout for this lesson along with many more professional guitar lessons. Thanks for watching and we'll catch up next in the members area.